This is a men's sports, unfortunately. I'm going to be speaking about just that uh, with my two guests this morning, Haran Ram Karan Singh, uh, who is the director of legal services of the Equal Opportunity Commission. I'm also going to be chatting with Amil Mohammed, who is the acting general secretary of the TNT Football Association, better known as TTFA. Good morning and welcome. Hi, good morning, Kari. Thank you for having us. Oh, yes, and thank you for being with us this morning. Morning. Now, this is such a big topic and it can span so far, but we're going to hone in a little bit and uh, to something that happened a little more recently, which was the racism that our team faced in that game against Mexico. And I know that is one of the discussions that's going to be brought up in this roundtable discussion called Racism in Sports that is a partner between EOC and TTFA. What do you yes. want to be the desired outcome of that discussion? Well, I, I think the purpose of this discussion is really to engage in a conversation. Well, well, there are two desired outcomes, really. The, the, the first is uh, the EOC is really hoping to engage a wider conversation through different sporting bodies, hence it's called Pass the Ball. Mm -hmm. So that um, after the, the discussion with um, the TTF, we were hoping to have discussions with other football bodies. But, 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 it, but specifically out of this meeting, out of, out of this round table, we want to focus on the on 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 the on the abuse and the racial abuse that that um, that players and uh, football players suffer when they go out there, and, and you know, uh, as evidenced by that re that recent in incident in in um in Mexico, it's an opportunity for persons to, to have a conversation and to share and to and to sensitize the public and and ex or explain how how they feel, and what what these experiences do to them. Um, it, it would also in increase our, our I, I believe it, it should increase our appreciation of, of what they have to um, undergo on a daily or, or if not a daily, but at least on a periodic or regular basis. Yeah, surely. And uh, it's something that we should not have to be talking about in 2021. And, you know, um, sport is a great unifier, but we mm -hmm. have also seen that sport can also divide people, uh, not only uh, around country lines, but along uh, ethnic lines as well. We've we've seen similarly in the game with uh, England versus um, Italy. You know the players with of African descent who were on the English team faced a lot of racism as well. You know um, why is there still room for racism in sports today? You think? Um, well, as you rightly said, people. Um P people are motivated by sports, which is a good thing. P people identify with teams. People identify, you know, just think about um, football. Everybody identifies, are you a Man U fan? Are you a Chelsea fan? Which is, a health which is healthy and which is good. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I mean, there are, all there are always incidents in sports where, you, where, where, just using English football as an example, there are always incidents with hooligan behavior where people, after a match, they vandalize places, they destroy cars, you know, they, 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 they burn and they loot and that sort of thing. And not just football, but any sports, even in the US, we, we see it. But um, different sports sometimes. So that sports brings out the best in us, but it, of course, it can also bring out the worst in us. It, 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 it unifies us along certain lines, uh, which is a good thing. But again, j just as with a, with a war between two countries, you know, be, being, um, being in your mindset tied to a certain line, to, to a point where you can't appreciate the other side or see the other side or, or see people as humans, but you see people as an us against them. Um, it, it can lead to that same, the, the same mindset of war, just as a war between, you know, war between two football teams could, could be seen as a war between two two countries. You know, the the, the Nazis versus the the, the 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 Americans, that sort of thing. Yep. People can take it to that level, and it's unfortunate, but that happens sometimes. And it happened between Trinidad and Mexico. Emil, uh, what? How did the? How did what happen at that game um, affect the players and and their psyche during that time? The players, to their credit and to the credit of the team management, really manage the situation as best as they can. We received a lot of support from the general public of Trinidad and Tobago, from particular arms of the state, and just and also psychological support as well. So I think that they were able to really manage it and really try to focus on the field itself. But it did really spiral into something because race, racism is a and in sport is a mirror of society. So to just dovetail over Haran's comments, mm -hmm. that it brings out it brings out the best in people, but at the same time it could bring out the worst. But sport is that unifying factor that if we use it as that beacon, then we could start to have these hard conversations to try and propel change. And what about the aftermath? Because that was at the moment on the field 
But um, what was the feedback from the team themselves, you know, for their, their own morale after the game mo and moving forward? I think a, a lot of the, the abuse that they suffered, especially on social media, because a lot of the, the racism was vile and directed a lot of their social media was really kind of shocking and jarring to a lot, a lot of the players because they know that from a certain perspective they they expect that that sort of animosity from a team but to take it down that type of lines was was very shocking to them in that moment but it's really a tough credit to the team management that was able to keep it together know that they they are focused on a particular plan and to not let that derail the plan in the moment. Surely. Haran, uh, this is a great partnership between the EOC and uh, TTFA, uh, but how did this partnership come about to deal with this issue? Um, well, we had a discussion, I think. It, 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 came out, it came out because of a desire of both parties, both the TTFA and the EOC. Um, you, well, I, I guess the, the incident in Mexico was obviously the catalyst. But coming out of it, um, we, we both had a discussion and we felt that this is an area that we would like to look into. Part of the EOC's mandate is really to address discrimination in Trinidad and Tobago in certain, well, in certain categories um, in, in the areas of employment, education, the provision of goods and services, and the provision of accommodation, where that discrimination is tied to certain personal and inherent characteristics. Um, one's race being one of them. The other characteristics, just to mention, would be things like your religion, your sex, your, you know, um, your, your, your disability, your origin. The, the thinking behind the Equal Opportunity Act, which is the act that created the commission, is that really decisions and actions should be based on one's merit and one's ability and not based on, uh, you know, your race, things over which you may not have any control, such as your race, your sex, um, your religion, that, that, that sort of thing. So it, it falls really within our mandate to work towards the elimination of this type of discrimination that we felt that this was a conversation that we would like to, to start and hopefully partner with, um, going forward, partner with other sporting bodies so that other athletes in other areas can share their experiences with, as well. Yeah, surely. And uh, I know the EOC operates and, and has uh, jurisdiction in Trinidad and Tobago, but is there any partnership with international organizations to address the same issue when it comes to the international stage? As we would have seen some actions against uh, people from Trinidad and Tobago from other countries as well. That may seem um, unequal to the, to the response to players from other countries and who may be of a, a different lineage. Okay. Um, the, the short answer to that is that um, international sport is governed by its own set of rules. So, you, for example, you have your own, uh, the, the, the course of international arbitration um, and that sort of thing. So that the short answer really is that the EOC has no direct um, role in, in, say, international sport arbitration. Um, we do, however, we can, however, partner with other institutions in other countries for the purposes of outreach and, and for the purposes of discussion. So it is quite possible that coming out of this round table, uh, we, we could um, do something along that line. But the, the short answer really is that international sport is, for example, CONCACAF is governed by its own governing body. Right. Um, FIFA has its own governing body, its own rules, its own set of arbitration proceedings. Um, one would remember a, a number of months ago, you know, there were arguments in the high court as to whether the high court has jurisdiction to deal with a FIFA matter or whether it has to go to the Court of International Arbitration for Sports. So, so that is a different area altogether, really. Surely, surely. And well, before we go, we don't have much time. Tell us about the roundtable discussion, when it will be, and uh, if the public can participate as well. Yes, um, the roundtable discussion will be on Wednesday at 5 p.m., 5.30 to 7, 7 p.m., it is available for public um, viewing via Zoom link. Um, the panel is comprised of Mr. Marvin Phillips, a goalkeeper in the senior men's national football team, Mr. Alvin Jones, footballer in the senior men's national football teams, Mr. Neil Shaka Hislop, a retired national footballer and ESPN announcer, um, and our Dr. Crystal Jane Virasamy, who is a commissioner at the Equal Opportunity Commission. It will be hosted by Mr. Caston Cupid. Um, it's, an, it's intended really to go from 5.30 to 7 p.m. and it's available via Zoom link so that the public can um, register via Zoom link. And where, where yeah, will we I, find I'd that just like to jump up. I'd just like to jump on slightly that we, we also have two additional panelists, which would be Kenwin Jones, former national captain, Wonderful. and Naomi Guerra, senior women's national footballer. Um, Shaka Hislop will not be would not be on this panel and able to make it, but we really appreciate all of the panelists that are able to jump on. 
And I'm glad you uh, got a uh, woman in sport as well to, to have that input also, because again, equal opportunities, right? Yes, yes. All right. And uh, where would we find that Zoom link and be able to register to uh, join the conversation? Um, it, it is available on the EOC's website, which is um, www.equalopportunity.gov.tt. Um, and I assume it's also available on the TTFA's website, if I'm not mistaken. All right. Yeah, and, the, and I think on each respective Facebook pages. Okay, fantastic. That's all we have time for this morning. I want to thank you both for chatting with us this morning. And uh, I look forward to the outcome of that roundtable discussion. And, see, and I hope that action can be taken out of it as well. As we uh, move forward to a sporting arena that is not uh, burdened by racism in Trinidad and Tobago and hopefully in due time in the world as well. I want to thank you, Haran Ramkaran Singh, Director of the Legal Services, e Legal Services of Equal Opportunity Commission. I want to thank you as well, Amil Mohammed, Acting General Secretary, TNT Football Association. Have a great morning. Okay, thank you very much. Thank right. you. With that, we're going to take a short break and we're going to come back. We have so much more on our program, so stay right where you are. This is The Normal Morning Show.